Greeting everyone and welcome to another episode of Anime Recap, today, we will be going through all My Hero Academia anime seasons from 1 to 5. This will serve as a quick recap before the 6th season drop next month. And so without any further ado, let's jump straight into the recap. In a world where most of the population is gifted with special powers known as quirks, Izuku Midoriya is a young boy who always dreamed of becoming a hero, despite not having a quirk himself, until one day he is attacked by a villain made of sludge and is rescued by none other than All Might, the most famous hero ever in his idol since childhood. After seeing Izuku is safe, All Might starts leaving with the villain in his custody, but Izuku grabs onto his leg and ends up flying with him. After All Might lands on the rooftop of a building, Izuku asks if someone who doesn't have a quirk could also be a hero like him. Izuku discovers that All Might's true form is that of a frail, emaciated man who suffered a massive injury years ago. All Might tells Izuku that he should give up on being a hero and focus on a more realistic dream. Disheartened, Izuku makes his way home, only to see his classmate and bully Katsuki Bakugo attacked by the same sludge villain that All Might captured. With no heroes around able to fight the villain, Izuku rushes in. As Izuku desperately tries to help, Katsuki asks why he's there. And Izuku answers that it is because Katsuki's eyes were pleading for help, and he couldn't bear to watch him die. The sludge villain recovers and attempts to attack Izuku, but All Might saves him and Bakugo then destroying the villain with a Detroit smash. All Might meets up with Izuku again and tells that he can become a hero, much to Izuku's tears. All Might tells Izuku of his quirk, one for all, a sacred torch that transfers its strength from person to person. While All Might believes Izuku to be worthy of his quirk, bestowing it to him right away would ruin his untrained body. All Might then designs a 10-month training regimen to ensure that Izuku can become a vessel that can carry it. After 10 months of intense training, Izuku has cleaned up Takoba Seaside Bay of its trash. As a result, Izuku's body is now more refined and muscular, which All Might claims that he is now a worthy successor for one for all. All Might gives Izuku a piece of his hair to eat, much to Izuku's confusion. After receiving All Might's quirk, the time has come for Izuku to attend the exams for the prestigious UA High School for Heroes in training. During the practical exam, Izuku gets himself in a pinch and is about to fail until one of his fellow examinees finds herself in serious danger and he runs to her rescue. One week later, Izuku receives his examination results from All Might. Despite scoring zero points on the practical, he scored 60 rescue points which gives more than enough to pass the exam and enrolls to UA High. It's Izuku's first day as a student of UA High School. However, his homeroom teacher Shota Aizawa decides to hold a physical test to evaluate how the students use their quirks. Mr. Aizawa threatens the worst ranked student with expulsion, and Izuku finds himself in another predicament as he still has not learned to control his quirk properly especially in the pitch test. Izuku is given one more throw, makes him a choice to either use his quirk or not use it and fail this one. He throws his pitch, and at the last second, he concentrates one for all through his fingertips. The explosive throw gives him a high score and impresses not only his classmates, but his teacher and All Might as well. Now donning their own hero costumes for hero basic training class, the students are assigned to a mock battle between teams of two to test their combat abilities. Izuku is paired with Achiko Yuraraka, the girl he helped during the entrance exams who also becomes his friend much to his joy. However, also to his dismay, one of his opponents is Bakugo, who always mocked him for his quirklessness, and is now furious at him. Five minutes passed in the building, Bakugo is about to attack Izuku but the latter catches his swing then his shoulder tosses the surprised Katsuki into the ground. Izuku doesn't back down from Katsuki, telling his former bully that he is no longer the weak and defenseless Deku. The flashback shows that Deku and Kaken grew up in the same neighborhood and have known each other since they were little kids. Katsuki always felt superior to Izuku, especially after developing his quirk. However, Izuku still never treated Katsuki like he was better, 
and even tried to help him after he fell into a river. Katsuki only took this as an insult, like Izuku was looking down on him. That same anger has carried over years later into the battle trial. The mock battle continues with Midoriya barely holding against Bakugo's devastating attacks. Leaving Yuraraka to face the other opponent Tenya Ida by herself. As the time limit approaches, Izuku seems to have no option but to use his quirk against Bakugo in an attempt to defeat him, until he comes up with a better idea. After losing against Izuku in the mock battle, Bakugo watches the rest of his classmates in action and realizes that he still has a long way to stand above his peers. After recovering from his injuries, Izuku attempts to cheer him up, to the point of sharing parts of his secret with Bakugo. Meanwhile, news that All Might is teaching at UA are received by some individuals with contempt. During Class 1A's homeroom class, Mr. Aizawa announces that the class needs to elect a representative which gives a chance for students to gain extra recognition. Much to his surprise, Izuku is chosen as the class president, but he ends up relinquishing the position to Ida when he and his friends find him more suitable for the position. The students are then assigned to another field exercise where they meet the famous rescue hero 13. She greets and introduces the students about her facility, the USJ, Unforeseen Simulation Joint. But as she was about to say the words before they begin, a horde of villains suddenly appear through Black Portal before them. The villains use their powers to scatter and ambush the students in order to attract All Might for a trap. Eraserhead is in charge to take down villains by using Erasure Quirk, and 13 orders to evacuate the students and contact UA High but Kurojiri stops them by using his Warping Quirk to separate the class and transport it into the various simulation zones. Izuku ends up stranded in underwater and surrounded on a ship along with his classmates Tsuyu Ajui and Minoru Mineta, but after learning more about their powers. He comes up with a plan to turn the tides. At UA in the nurse's office, All Might tries to contact 13 and Shoda but is unable to. All Might wants to go to the USJ in hero form soon but Principal Nizu keeps him occupied. Elsewhere, Ida is chosen by the others to break through the enemy trap and call for help. The students fight for their lives against the League of Villains while Ida manages to escape with his friend's help which makes Kurojiri declare that the villain's plans ruined and warps back to their side. Knowing that their group can't fight off reinforcements, the villains decide to retreat. Once it's clear that Ida will warn the other teachers who will come to stop them, the League of Villains leader Tamira Shigaraki decides to kill Izuku and his friends just to hurt All Might's pride before they leave, when All Might himself suddenly appears. After All Might's arrival at USJ, Shigaraki unleashes his secret weapon, the multi-quirk monster called Nomu, against All Might, who finds himself in a pinch, until Izuku and some other students arrive to assist him, but All Might has little time left before he runs out of power to defeat the creature in order to protect the school. All the students watch in awe of All Might's strength. He explains about how many blows he take to defeat it and continues, declaring that the League of Villains are finished, much to Tamira's displeasure. Although he was able to defeat the Nomu, All Might has no energy left and is defenseless against Shigaraki, but Izuku manages to stall the enemy long enough for the other teachers to arrive and force him to retreat. As the leftover villains are captured and the students are rescued, All Might thanks Izuku for saving his life. Shigaraki confers with his master Kurojiri, implying that their feud against the heroes is just the beginning. Later at night, Izuku has been recovered and released from Recovery Girls Infirmary with his wounds treated. He finds Yuraraka and Ida waiting outside the school and walks with them. Elsewhere, an unidentified figure standing on a rooftop stares down at the city. Still recovering from the previous incident, the students prepares for their upcoming school festival event. At lunchtime, the students of class 1A decide to forget about the attack and pump themselves up for the sports festival. The most excited out of all of them appears to be Achiko, who puts on her game face and yells to everyone that she plans to do her best. Afterwards, she walks with Izuku and Tenya who are wondering why Achiko wants to become a hero and Izuku admits that she has a more practical reason about it. The school is about to hold the sports festival, 
which will serve as an opportunity for the students to show off their quirks to professional heroes looking for sidekicks. In the occasion, All Might confesses to Izuku that his powers are diminishing, and that the festival is an opportunity for Izuku to show his true value to the world. Todoroki expresses to Izuku that he will defeat him and show his true power. Class 1A walks out to the freshman stage of the festival stadium and the UA Sports Festival begins. The other freshman classes also arrive. Midnight who is the chief referee for this event, asks the student representative Katsuki Bakugo to lead the pledge. Instead, Katsuki takes the stage and announces to everyone that he will win the festival, garnering boos from all the students. Afterwards, Midnight announces the preliminaries of the festival will be an obstacle course race around the stadium. The participants struggle to exit through the stadium door. Shoto realizes an obstacle and makes his move by freezing the pathway and racing ahead of all the others. During the obstacle race, Todoroki effortlessly passes each obstacle with Bakugo in hot pursuit. At the last obstacle, Izuku uses his wits to pass through both and win the race. Although Izuku does not show off his quirk in the first event, All Might comments on how he had nothing to worry about because Izuku shows that he is a fighter whose selflessness doesn't hold him back. Midnight announces the standings from the first event and also announced the second event in sports festival, the Cavalry Battle. Midnight explains that the event consists of forming teams from two to four people in order to earn points by stealing headbands from other teams. A team's point value is based on the value of its individual members. The members of the team receive point value based on their placement in the obstacle race. Izuku who comes in first place, worth of 10 million points, however his victory is short-lived when he realizes that by being first place and the other students desperately figure out to take him down. He is becoming the massive target for the next round. In the preparation of the next round, the cavalry battle, Izuku notices that all the participants are joining fellow peers from their homeroom class, but also they're avoiding him because he's worth so many points. He begins to panic, until Achiko decides to join him and says it's good for friends to team up. They try to recruit Tenya for their team as well, but he refuses and joins Shoto's team instead. As the time runs out for participants to forming teams, Izuku teaming up with Achiko. Tokoyami and support course student Mei Hatsum. Being the team with most points, they barely evade the advances from the other teams from their class, while the students from class B take advantage of it to claim points for themselves especially team Minoma whom are managed to steal Katsuki's headband. Izuku takes notice of class 1, B's long-term strategy and believes that none of them will come after his team. He prepares to instruct his team to relax, but Team Todoroki confronts them. Shoto declares that he will take the 10 million point headband. As the end of the cavalry battle approaches, Izuku's team has a heated confrontation with the team led by Todoroki. Shoto was able to steal Izuku's 10 million points headband and as a result, meaning he cannot move but he takes a moment to remind Izuku he would try his best to defeat his friend. Fumikage suggests the team try for other headbands, but Izuku refuses and Achiko encourages them to try and get their points back. Izuku tries to grab the 10 million points back from Todoroki. However he mistakenly grabs the other headband which only worth 70 points. Without enough points to move on to the next round, Team Midoriya makes one final attempt. Katsuki also arrives on the scene, but time runs out just as everyone is about to clash. Despite losing first place to them, they earn a place in the next round by working together. Izuku cries tears of joy while Shoto berates himself for using his left side. Other teams blaming for their loss especially Team Tetsu Tetsu on karmic punishment for underhandedly stealing Minoru's headband. The 16 remaining students advance to the final stage, with one-on-one -on -one battles to decide the winner. Before the fights begin, Todoroki has a private talk with Izuku, revealing the reasons for his hatred toward his father, the world's second best hero Endeavor. Meanwhile, the two top pro heroes meet on a set of stairs. Endeavor tries to ignore All Might, but All Might pursues him. 
He compliments Endeavor for his son's performance and asks for tips on how to train the heroes of the future. However, Endeavor refuses and only replies that Shoto will usurp All Might as the top hero one day. The fighting tournament bracket was announced, and Izuku's first round opponent was general department student Hitoshi Shinso. In the first round, Izuku is struck by Hitoshi Shinso's brainwashing ability, but breaks free in the last moment and obtains victory by countering with a shoulder throw and sends him out of bounds. Having been defeated, Hitoshi remembers his past. At Nabu City Junior High, many of Hitoshi's classmates comment on how his quirk is very villainous. Hitoshi gets used to being looked at as the bad guy but has always stayed headstrong in his desire to be a hero. Before he walks towards the exit, Izuku asks him what drives to be a hero. After Shoto's talk with his father Endeavor, Todoroki displays his overwhelming power and easily wins his match against Hantasiro, becoming Izuku's opponent in the following round. Everyone watches in disbelief of Shoto's power, and Izuku notices that he looks immensely sad. The UA Sports Festival continues with the completion of the other six bracket matches. Shiyazaki swiftly overcomes Kaminari. Mei manipulates Ida in order to show off her tech to support companies, giving him the win by stepping out. Mina beats Aoyama by exploiting his weakness. Yayorozu is overwhelmed by the speed of Tokoyami's dark shadow and is pushed out of the ring. Tetsu Tetsu and Kurishima have a homestyle brawl ending in a tie. Meanwhile, Achiko and company discuss her upcoming match against Katsuki. Izuku offers her a strategy to beat him, but Achiko refuses and declares that she will do her best to defeat Katsuki on her own. Throughout all of this, Achiko is trying to prepare herself for the daunting task of battling Bakugo. Achiko uses many different strategies to attempt to defeat Bakugo. However, despite her plans, Bakugo wins after Achiko falls unconscious. Izuku goes to the waiting rooms to prepare. He is surprised when he finds Yurarika there and not Recovery Girl's office. Taken back by Achiko's lively attitude, Izuku asks if she's okay, to which she replies she's fine. Also during this time, Tetsu Tetsu and Kurishima have an arm wrestling contest to determine who moves on to the next round, Kurishima wins and the two become friends. Meanwhile, Izuku leaves Achiko after she wishes him good luck. Afterwards, Yurarika talks over the phone with her father who tries to console her, but to no avail. Izuku felt emotional himself while reflecting on Achiko's encouragement to him, then he is approached by Endeavor who tries to tell him about his power was similar to All Might but Izuku walks away. Izuku prepares for his epic fight with Todoroki. Elsewhere, Tamiya Shigaraki is advised to pay close attention to the match because the two boys may become formidable obstacles to him one day and replies that he is not worried about them. Izuku and Todoroki begin their match. Izuku, while still trying to win, is attempting to get Todoroki to use his left side so they can both battle at their full power. As Todoroki fights on, more of his past is revealed through flashbacks. He remembers his mother saying it was okay to use his left side because he wanted to be a hero. So Izuku fights Todoroki who is using both sides. Cementos and Midnight attempt to stop the match before the two deal their final attacks but to no avail. Everyone watches in pure disbelief, and after he recovers, Cementos commends both of them for their talent. Present Mike asks what caused the explosion, to which Shota replies that it was caused by the rapid change in temperature of the arena. The smoke clears, and Izuku is thrown out of bounds resulted to a victory for Todoroki and moves into the next round. In the aftermath of Izuku and Shoto's showdown, Katsuki finds himself annoyed as he overhears fans discussing the battle. Shoto exits the arena and encounters his father in the corridor about the former's fire powers. Endeavor tries to offer him the chance to become his sidekick after graduation, but Shoto ignores it and reveals he hasn't rescinded his disavowal of his father. Todoroki admits to his father that he was able to use his left side fire because he forgot all about him. Izuku caused significant damage in his right hand warranting surgery.
School nurse recovery girl refuses future treatment if he does it again. All Might admits to his youth being identical to Izuku's. In the last matches of the second round, Ida and Tokoyami push respective opponents Shiyazaki and Ishido out of bounds, while Bakugo overpowers Kurishima. When Ida fights Todoroki, Ida is frozen and rendered unable to go on. Bakugo figures out Tokoyami's weakness to intense light as they fight and makes him yield. Meanwhile in Tokyo, Ida's brother Ingenium is seriously injured and paralyzed in pursuit of the hero killer, Stain. And Ida is informed not long after by his mother. Stain is invited by Kurojiri to meet with Shigaraki about joining the League of Villains. Todoroki is still unsure if he should be using his left side. As the match starts, Todoroki attacks Bakugo with his ice power. Bakugo becomes angry as he wants Todoroki to fight him with both of his sides. After Izuku's cheer, Todoroki decides to use his left side but when Bakugo is about to use his howitzer impact, Todoroki suddenly stops using his left side. The attack pushes Todoroki out of bounds, resulting in Bakugo being named the winner. Angered, Bakugo still goes after Todoroki. But Midnight stops him. After the match, All Might gives everyone medals. But Katsuki reminds him that his champion refuses the gold medal because he feels this has not proved that he is the best. All Might forces him to take it by putting it in his mouth, and then moves on to close out the ceremony. Ida already left to see his brother at the hospital and did not attend the award ceremony. After everyone went home to recover, Todoroki finally decides to go see his mother whom he had not seen for many years. The sports festival is over, and everyone's injuries are almost recovered. Mr. Aizawa announces that everyone has to decide a hero name for themselves especially for Izuku who reveals that his hero name was chosen the moniker of Deku, which makes Achiko inspires him and Izuku had a change of heart, and that since many of the students have gotten multiple offers from pro heroes, everyone will be doing a one-week internship at a hero agency. Midnight joins in to offer feedback on everyone's hero name requests. After that, everyone chooses an agency for their internship. Izuku is still not sure which agency he should join when suddenly All Might shows up. He tells Izuku that his teacher has offered an internship, and Izuku accepts it before he leaves with Achiko. Meanwhile, Ida picks an agency in the area where his brother was attacked. The next day, everyone sets off for the internships. Ida affirms their friendship with Izuku and Achiko and walks away, changing his expression from a smile to a vengeful glare. Afterwards, Izuku travels to Gran Torino's house and frightened to find him inside playing dead. The internship program starts and Izuku is waiting to meet Gran Torino but when he does he is not what he expected. Izuku begins to leave until Gran Torino shows his power and tempts Izuku to fight him. Meanwhile Tenya is looking for hero killer Stain and the other students of class A are also busy in their internship. Izuku trains hard with Gran Torino and finally starts to understand one for all. Gran Torino instructs Izuku to heat up the food he bought, but Izuku messes it up by not allowing the food to rotate in the microwave while they cook. After Gran Torino berates him for fouling up the frozen pastries, Izuku parts of himself evenly. Gran Torino watches closely as Izuku spreads one for all's power throughout his body continuously, impressed with how quickly he caught on to his symbolic lesson. Then he challenges Izuku again using his newly mastered ability, one for all, full cowl. All Might learns more about the captured Nomu. After Stain refuses to join the League of Villains, he returns to Hosu City to hunt down more heroes. Shigaraki also goes to Hosu, releasing several Nomus into the city. On the way to respond to the Nomu attacks, Tenya discovers Stain just as he is about to kill another hero. Meanwhile, Hosu City is under attack by Stain and by three Nomus released by the League of Villains. As Gran Torino battles the Nomu that attacked their train, Izuku searches the city for Tenya and arrives just in time to prevent Stain from killing him. Having received a cryptic message from Izuku before he attacks Stain, Shoto arrives just as Stain has used his quirk to paralyze Izuku. 
He scolds Izuku for not explaining the urgency of the situation because he could have gotten there sooner. As Izuku figures out the secret of Stain's quirk, Shoto struggles to evade Stain's many blades and Tenya struggles with his own rage and quest for vengeance. After Shoto tries to save Tenya like Izuku had done for him, Tenya reflects shamefully on himself and starts to move his hand. Tenya fights off Stain's quirk and joins the battle with Shoto and Izuku. Endeavor and Gran Torino defeat Anomo while the three UA students defeat Stain, at the cost of serious injuries to Tenya and Izuku. Endeavor defeats the remaining Nomu and controls the situation. Shoto restrains the defeated hero killer using rope and native carries an injured Izuku out to the street. Gran Torino meets them there and berates Izuku for leaving the train against his orders. The other pros arrive to call an ambulance for the injured and the police to arrest the hero killer. As Tenya apologizes his friends for getting them mixed up in the fight, Izuku got swoop up from the sky by a Nomu. But then, Stain recovers and uses his quirk to stop it. He saves Izuku by grabbing him and stabbing Nomu's brain. In spite of being heavily injured, Stain states that the fake, pro-heroes and the pathetic criminals in society must be purged to create a more just society. Everyone including Endeavor stepping back even with a fear when they saw that Stain's perforated lungs cause him to lose consciousness as he was about to attack. Following Stain's arrest, the video of Stain expressing his views on the present heroes has gone viral, and more people are falling to those views. With Stain in custody, they begin to gravitate towards the League of Villains. Meanwhile, credit for the arrest has gone to Endeavor, to ensure that Tenya, Izuku and Shoto are not arrested for using their powers without permission. Ida apologizes for his rash behavior and decides to work on improving himself. Kirishima confirms that the location Izuku sent out earlier was an SOS. But he and Tetsu Tetsu are caught and punished by fourth kind for being late to the internship. Gran Torino calls All Might and berates him because Izuku got his teaching license revoked and his pay docked. All Might apologizes and blames it on his own inadequate teaching. He replies that heroes will rise to defeat them, but Gran Torino responds that the League of Villains will rally them under Stain's ideology since there has been a connection between them. He advises All Might to reveal to Izuku everything about himself and one for all when the opportunity arises and ends the call. Meanwhile, two men discuss about Stain's backstory and ideology in a hostess bar after one of them claims he may retire because of the drop in crime due to All Might's presence. The man who smokes the cigarette, stating that Stain's words before falling unconscious will inspire many criminals into uniting with the organization Stain was believed to be allied with. Izuku and Gran Torino bids farewell after a week of training. He thanks his new mentor for helping him gain more control over his quirk. As Izuku walks away, Gran Torino returns to his senile state and asks Izuku his name. At first Izuku is disconcerted by it, but he soon realizes what Gran Torino is truly asking for and replies, Deku. Pleased with Izuku's response, Gran Torino waves him off and they go their separate ways. Following the conclusion of their internships, everyone has returned to school and talked to each other about their experience. Mashireo admits he fears what may have happened if Stain had come to the USJ and Denki replies that the hero killer is kind of cool because of his personality. Izuku scolds Denki for this, prompting the latter to apologize. Tenya admits Stain could be looked at as, kind of cool, but goes on to criticize the villain for killing for his own ends. At Class 1A's Hero Basic Training Class, All Might announces their lesson will consist of a rescue training race through Field Gamma. After the class, All Might decides to tell Izuku the truth behind his quirk, one for all. The true mastermind of the League of Villains is revealed to be All for One, a man who can steal and grant quirks. Meanwhile, a man who is surprised about the capture of Hero Killer, Stain, exclaims that Tamir's position is to supervise and unify the new villains who came to join the League of Villains. Final exams are approaching, and the class prepares for their written and practical exams. Momo hosts a study party at her mansion, 
and Itsuka tells Izuku and his friends that the practical exam will be against robot enemies. After making it through three days of written exams, everyone is shocked to learn that the practical exam will not involve robots this year, instead, they will be fighting in predetermined pairs against one of their teachers. To pass, they must either defeat the teacher or escape the arena before time runs out. The first team, Aijiro and Rikido, attempt to take on Cementos head-on with their endurance and strength respectively. But Izuku notices that the strategy won't earn them a victory because unlike the students, Cementos doesn't have a time limit to his quirk. As a result, Kurishima and Sato both failed the practical exam and are ultimately defeated. The next pair to take the practical exam consists of Fumikage and Tsuyu. Immediately their opponent, Ectoplasm, creates clones of himself that surround the students. He states that all of the UA teachers will not hold back and are doing their best to crush the students. As the practical in the final exams continues, Tsuyu and Fumikage work together to evade Ectoplasm's army of clones. Both struggles to battle against him, due to his giant bite detention technique that creates a giant clone of himself which attacks and immobilizes the students. But Azui believes that they can win, because Tokoyami is strong. Ectoplasm was able to take down Dark Shadow, but his legs ends up cuffed in the exchange. Ectoplasm praises the duo for their cleverness, and they pass the practical exam. In the third match, Tenya and Mashareo face off against the burrowing power loader. They pass the exam after Ojiro repels the teacher and crosses through the escape gate, which makes Power Loader impressed and congratulates them on passing. In the fourth match, Todoroki and Momo whose confidence was shattered after being easily defeated by Fumikage in the sports festival, attempt to evade Aizawa's quirk. Shoto claims he can escape the restraints instantly, but Aizawa hands him from a light pole and throws caltrips beneath him. As Momo makes haste for the escape gate, she nervously ponders whether she's making the right choices or not. But Shoto backs up in confidence on her and reveals why he voted her as a class president, then they come up with a better plan and able to defeat Eraserhead and Shoto thanks Momo for helping him pass the practical exam much to Yayorozu's tears. In the next match, Achiko and Yuga try to avoid being sucked into 13's black hole. Yuga asks Achiko if she likes Izuku, prompting an unexpected resolution to their match with 13. Denki and Mina attempt to evade the buildings being toppled by Principal Nizu as he strategically cuts off their escape routes, but they failed because of Nizu's intelligence. Kyoka and Koji, who both have sound-dependent quirks, struggle to come up with a strategy against present mix overpowering noise. Kyoka asks Koji if he can control bugs, to which he confirms and she pleads for him to do so because there is no other way. They do so and overwhelm present Mike, allowing Koda and Jiro to escape. Then, Mizo creates a distraction to allow Toru an opening against Snipe. Midnight takes out Hanta quickly, leaving Mineta alone against her somnambulist quirk. But Mineta states that he put on a scared act to draw her away from the escape gate and reveals himself with Hanta's tape wrapped around his face to nullify Midnight's quirk. She tries to whip him into submission, but Minoru counters with his special move, Grape Rush which uses to stick Midnight in her whip to the ground far away, allowing him to escape and pass the exam. The final match of the final exams pits Izuku and Katsuki against All Might. Izuku struggles to convince Katsuki to work with him, especially since Izuku believes they have no choice but to escape and Katsuki seems determined to fight All Might head-on. Even with All Might's diminishing strength and weights, both students face serious injuries as they put everything they have into the fight. Inspired by Katsuki's resolve, Izuku leaps into action and hits All Might with a smash. He quickly grabs his partner and makes for the escape gate. All Might notes that Izuku could have escaped alone, but it's always been the part of his being to help those in need. In Recovery Girl's office, she heals Izuku and Katsuki while berating All Might for hitting them too hard. All Might muses over the boy's performance, proud that they can both grow stronger because they smile in the face of adversity. At the League of Villains hideout, two visitors express interest in joining the League of Villains. 
Tomura resents the fact that Stain's ideology has inspired so many people when his own approach has not been nearly as successful. Meanwhile, at UA High's Class 1A homeroom, those who believe they failed the practical section of final exams fear that they won't be able to go to the training camp during summer vacation. But Shota enters the room and makes a final minute twist by telling everyone that they're going regardless of their result in the final exams. The students will go to training camp to get stronger as long as the teachers left out to make their work and able to win. He calls it again the rational deception, which upsets many of the students who feel they were tricked. Izuku and his classmates go on a shopping trip to prepare for summer training camp. At the mall, Shigaraki appears and briefly holds Izuku hostage. Before leaving, he explains his ideology and motives to Izuku before Achiko shows up. The UA High's first semester ended and summer vacation is about to begin. While all for one plans to groom Tamura to replace him in the future. Following the end of the semester, Izuku continues to train in his apartment. It still feels surreal to him to have All Might's power coursing through him. He is interrupted when Denki Kaminari and Minoru Mineta suddenly arrive at his door and ask him to train at the pool before the training camp arrives. At UA High School, Shota Aizawa and Vlad King review the quirks of their respective students from Class 1A and Class 1B. The students of Class 1A have a PE class at the pool, while reminiscing about the main events of the previous seasons. During the night, Shota and Vlad King discuss that the location of the training camp has been changed to protect the students. Tamura Shigaraki gives someone a call to tell them a new game will be starting soon. On the day of the Forest Lodge trip, Class 1A and 1B prepare to board buses. An hour later, Class 1A's bus stops for a restroom break. Suddenly, two women wearing cat-like costumes and a small boy appear. The women introduce themselves as the professional hero team, the Wild Wild Pussycats, while the boy is revealed to be Koda, an orphan in their care who despises heroes. Mandalay tells Class 1A that they must reach the training camp at the base of the mountain by midday or they will miss lunch. Despite their best efforts, Class 1A's progress is inhibited by earthen beasts throughout the forest, controlled by Pixie Bob with her quirk, and the students miss their deadline by hours. However, Team Pussycats is satisfied with their performances, and they are offered dinner instead. Afterwards, Class 1A go to the hot springs for a bath. Mineta tries to peek at the girls' bath side but is prevented by Koda, Koda accidentally sees the girls and faints but is saved by Midoriya. Midoriya brings the unconscious Koda to the cabin and learns the story of his parents. Pro Heroes Who Died in the Line of Duty Class 1A and 1B continues training as the villains prepare to attack. Despite Koda's hatred for heroes, and the superhuman society in general, Midoriya tries to convince Koda by telling his own tales as his friend's story. In the third day of training camp, the students who failed the finals exam had to stay up the previous night for extra lessons. Shota pushes them to stay awake and try harder. He also reminds Achiko and Yuga's team that they need to work hard too since they barely passed finals. Izuku asks Shota if All Might will be joining the campers, but Shota says he won't be at all. Pixie Bob announces that both classes will compete in a test of courage after training. Later at night, Shota takes the remedial students to a classroom while everyone else participates in the Pussycats minigame. The group of villains named the Vanguard Action Squad, arrives and begins to attack when the students are participating in a training exercise and catch them unaware. Izuku remembers Koda is by himself. At his secret hiding spot, Koda recalls Mandalay telling him that one day he'll understand why heroes exist. Koda refuses to believe that. He stands up and notices the mountainside burning. The villains continue their attack, working in teams or alone to target different groups of students and teachers. Muscular, one of the villains chances upon Koda at his secret hideout and tries to kill him, but is stopped by Midoriya. Midoriya is pushed to his limit in the fight but manages to defeat Muscular with a 1 million percent Delaware Detroit smash and saves Koda. 
Koda finally overcomes his prejudices due to Midoriya's selflessness and calls him, my hero. After defeating Muscular, Midoriya carries Koda back to the camp and runs into Aizawa. Midoriya passes Koda over to him, as he has a message to deliver to everyone through Mandalay's telepathy. The teacher asks Midoriya to deliver a message from him as well. Mandalay delivers both messages, that Bakugo is one of the villain's targets and the students have permission to use their quirks to defend themselves. Meanwhile, Tetsu Tetsu and Kendo find the source of a poisonous gas that is filling part of the forest, a villain named Mustard. The two work together to defeat Mustard and this results in the gas dissipating. Midoriya runs into Shoji while searching for Bakugo and learns that Tokoyami's quirk, Dark Shadow, is out of control. Mizo asks for Midoriya's help in saving Tokoyami from his own quirk and to choose between saving Tokoyami or Bakugo. Midoriya devises a plan to save both, which involves leading Dark Shadow to Bakugo and Todoroki who are fighting the villain Moonfish. Dark Shadow defeats Moonfish and is then weakened and brought back under control by Bakugo and Todoroki. The students team up and run into Yuraraka and Tsuyu fighting a villain called Himiko Toga. As there are now more students present than she is ready to take on by herself. Himiko retreats. Midoriya asks the girls to help them protect Bakugo but Bakugo and Tokoyami have already been kidnapped by the villain Mr. Compress. Anomu chases Yosetsu of class 1B who is carrying a heavily injured Yayorozu but the Nomu is called back by Dabi as their mission has been accomplished. Yayorozu makes a tracking device which Yosetsu attaches to the Nomu. Midoriya and the others continue to chase Mr. Compress but are unable to keep up with his speed. Midoriya devises a plan to launch him. Todoroki and Shoji into the air using Yurarika's and Azui's quirks. They manage to successfully tackle Mr. Compress to the ground. Midoriya, Todoroki and Shoji have caught up with Mr. Compress, and with Aoyama's assistance, they manage to rescue Tokoyami. However, the villains retreat with Bakugo, leaving the heroes in training in anguish. Yue faces serious backlash over the next couple of days, even while the police pursues a lead to find the League of Villains. Midoriya wakes up in a hospital bed, two days after the attack. Almost all of Class 1A students comes to visit him. Kirishima and Todoroki reveal that they plan to go rescue Bakugo. But Tenya argues that they need to allow the pro heroes to handle the situation. He and Aijiro argue, and the latter reaches out to Izuku for approval. At Midoriya's room in the hospital, Class 1A debates whether or not they should attempt a rescue mission. Kirishima lets Midoriya know that he and Todoroki intend to make their move that very night. Yue organizes a press conference whose airing is met with criticism. Meanwhile, the police continues with their investigation and organizes a team of heroes to strike back against the villains. Midoriya decides to join Todoroki and Kurishima in their attempt to rescue Bakugo, also does Yayorozu. Ida attempts to convince them to drop their plan, but ultimately he decides to join so that he can keep an eye on them and call the mission off if actual combat breaks out. The brave group of students named the Bakugo Rescue Squad, arrives to Kamino Ward and change into disguises to avoid standing out. Shigaraki attempts to convince Bakugo to join the League of Villains, but Bakugo reveals his commitment to becoming a hero and begins attacking twice and Shigaraki. Midoriya, Yayorozu, Todoroki, Kurishima, and Ida continue their search and rescue to save Bakugo. None of them have effective stealth skills, so they ponder their next move. Izuku starts to mutter and Tenya thinks about how he needs to keep the group out of trouble. After arriving at what seems to be the hideout, they discover a large number of Nomas inside. The pro heroes then capture the members of the League of Villains, but an unexpected warp attacks the heroes and takes Bakugo once again. Unbeknownst to them, the greatest evil man is about to make his reappearance as Izuku and the others are stricken with fear. All for one, the mastermind behind the League of Villains, has snatched back his underlings from the heroes, and Bakugo as well. All for one commends best genist for saving himself while protecting the other heroes from the explosion. 
best genist recognizes the masked man as the suspected ringleader of the League of Villains. The pro hero attacks, but all for one easily defeats him with a blast of air. The villain recognizes that his strength comes from practice and experience and decides his quirk doesn't need to be taken. As All for One is about to notice the students, All Might suddenly appears and flies to the rescue, but he's worried about Bakugo's safety and can't fight at full power. All Might tells his ultimate rival that he will defeat him and lock him up for the rest of his life. All Might rushes him, but All for One repels him with an enhanced quirk combo attack. Midoriya comes up with a plan that would allow the students to escape with Bakugo, without fighting the villains, and it all comes down to Kurishima. All Might and All for One clash furiously as their battle is witnessed by the entire world. To shatter All Might's resolve, All for One reveals that he brainwashed the grandson of All Might's mentor, whom he killed, over several years into the now notorious Tamura Shigaraki, which strikes a pain into All Might's heart. This backfires as the hero now musters his power into his fist to deliver his strongest attack, the United States of Smash. Victorious but entirely spent, All Might sends a message through the TV which the populace thinks is a threat to future villains, however Midoriya realizes it is to let him know that it's time for him take on the mantle of the world's symbol of peace. As All Might is officially retired, and all for one imprisoned in the maximum security prison, Tartarus, the police hold a closed conference on how this may embolden more villains to Shigaraki's league. A depressed Midoriya receives a text from All Might to meet at Dagoba Beach where he trained for the entrance exams and the two share a heartfelt moment. Sometime later, Aizawa and All Might visit the students' parents to discuss a new dorm system to better protect the students. While many are open to it, including the Bakugo family, Izuku's mother Inko is against it as her son has repeatedly suffered grave bodily injuries in emulation of All Might since attending UA. To prove his determination, Izuku shows his mother the note from Koda thanking him for being his hero, and as a show of humility, All Might bows his head to the ground to promise Inko he will be a better teacher for Izuku, finally earning her hesitant approval. Izuku promises to be more considerate of his mother's feelings from now on and work to be safer. Meanwhile, All for One is gleeful that Tamura will now evolve with his teacher's absence. After Izuku's mother reluctantly allows him to live in the dorm, he and all his friends shift to the recently constructed dorm for 1A. The principal thinks to himself about how the dorm doesn't only help the students, but will help to determine the identity of the UA trader. Aizawa informs the class that, had the situation been different, he would have expelled not only those who went to save Bakugo, but also those who knew about their plan and didn't stop them. After explaining the dorm system, Aizawa leaves the students to unpack. Later that evening, most of the students, the exception being Bakugo and Tsuyu, take a tour of the rooms to elect a king of rooms. Sato is the surprise winner, due to his baking talent. Yurarika calls those who went to save Bakugo out to the courtyard. There, Tsuyu reveals her conflicted feelings that she was unable to prevent her friends from breaking the rules, and her desire for everything to go back the way it was before. Yurarika confirms that the whole class feels the same way. Ergo the King of Rooms Contest The Bakugo Rescue Squad apologizes to Tsuyu, and Midoriya looks forward to the future. During homeroom, Aizawa emphasizes that to be able to pass the provisional license which only has a 50% rate of passing in being a hero, they must acquire at least two ultimate moves. They were guided by Cementos, Midnight and Ectoplasm. Inside the gym, while everyone was busy training, All Might appeared and gave each student some advice. Midoriya, who has trouble creating an ultimate move went to the development studio to have his costume altered to support the ligaments of his arms. There together with Ida and Yurarika, they were reunited with support hero Hatsum who was developing her new support items which she eagerly tried on them. After several conversations, Midoriya was able to come up with an idea on how to overcome his problem and redesigned his costume. Just as a rock that Bakugo hits with his ultimate move falls towards All Might, Midoriya jumps in and destroys it with his ultimate move, full cowling, shoot style, 
a technique where uses his legs contrasting All Might who primarily uses his arms. Class 1A were finally able to adjust their costumes and create ultimate weapons. Before their training is finished, Class 1B arrives at the gym claiming the place to be their time for training. Monoma, who has an obvious dislike for Class 1A, provokes them haughtily and declares to defeat their class in the coming examination, however, Aizawa states that the two classes will be having the exam in different locations to avoid fighting each other. After reaching the place for the provisional examination, Aizawa meets Ms. Joke, a colleague from his former neighboring agency. She constantly teases him into going out with her, to which he always quickly declines. The class meets several other students from other schools and the test starts with an elimination exam. However, unbeknownst to the UA students, there is a tradition where other schools primarily target UA students every time an examination starts. Ketsubutsu Academy students ambush Class 1A, but they manage to evade Ketsubutsu's balls by working together. Shindo then separates them by using his vibrate quirk to break the ground. Meanwhile, in another part of the arena, Shiketsu High School's Anesa uses his whirlwind quirk to pass, taking out 120 students at once. Midoriya gets hit once by Shiketsu High School student Kami using her glamour quirk. A big group of students finds them but Midoriya manages to dodge all of their attacks. He rescues Yurarika, but he discovers that it's only Kami pretending to be Yurarika. Siro and the real Yurarika help him. Somewhere else, Todoroki is ambushed by a group of students from Seijin High School. As the battle continues, Todoroki uses his fire quirk against a water attack in order to generate a huge steam cloud, thus obscuring his opponent's vision. He lures his opponents to a large gas tank and ignites it, causing them to be knocked down and then subdued with his ice quirk. He easily activates their target rings and passes the exam. While trapped in a building, Shoji, Suyu, Jiro and Yayorozu also pass the exam after defeating their opponents from CI Academy. Meanwhile, Midoriya comes up with a plan that will allow him, Yurarika and Siro to pass the exam. Elsewhere, Bakugo, Kaminari and Kurishima face off against Shiketsu High student Seiji Shishikura. While waiting for the exam to conclude, Aizawa comments to Ms. Joke that he has noticed that Midoriya and Bakugo seem to inspire Class 1A to achieve greatness. Seiji uses his meatball quirk to neutralize both Kurishima and Bakugo. However, Kaminari uses one of Bakugo's grenades to distract Seiji long enough to zap him with his electricity quirk. Seiji temporarily loses control of his quirk, allowing Kurishima and Bakugo to retaliate. Together, the three students are able to pass the test. Meanwhile, Midoriya acts as a decoy, allowing Yurarika and Siro to restrain all of their opponents, and those three pass the exam as well. Elsewhere, Ida is searching for stray class 1A students and finds Aoyama hiding alone. When they are attacked by many students, they try to run away, but Aoyama shoots his naval laser into the air as a beacon. His plan is to sacrifice himself by luring the enemy close, allowing Ida to use his super speed to target three opponents and pass the test. Just as all seems lost, the rest of Class 1A arrives to assist in defeating the nearby students. Thanks to Aoyama's beacon, the rest of Class 1A all pass, bringing the number of successful examinees to 100 and the event to an end. The students are tasked with rescuing citizens from a disaster, the citizens are professionals from the Help Us Company, which specializes in acting as hostages that need to be saved. The older students set up a first aid station for the other heroes to bring the citizens to. The students split up to cover more ground and work as teams to effectively rescue everyone. Yurarika decides to push her feelings for Midoriya on the side to focus more on developing her skills as a hero. The students appear to be doing well, until Gang Orca arrives to challenge them to fend off villains while continuing to rescue the citizens. The staff reveals who all received their provisional licenses. Nearly all of Class 1A received it with the exception of Todoroki and Bakugo, due to Todoroki's feud with Anesa, who also failed the test, 
and Bakugo's rudeness towards the victims. However, the ones who failed can make it up by taking a three-month course to obtain their provisional licenses. Midoriya tries to find Kami to talk to her, but her classmates tell him she wasn't feeling well and left early. It is revealed that Kami was actually Himiko in disguise. As her quirk allows her to transform into those whose blood she consumes. She returns to the League of Villains with Midoriya's blood. All Might interrogates all for one in prison, with the latter gloating about what he has accomplished despite being beaten to near death and imprisoned. All Might vows to his enemy that Shigaraki will not kill him or Midoriya. At night, Bakugo has Midoriya meet him in the place where they had their mock match. He reveals that he's figured out the secrets behind Midoriya's quirk as witnessing All for One allowed him to understand that quirks can be transferred and deduced Midoriya's connection to All Might. Frustrated with Midoriya's progress and his acknowledgement from All Might, Bakugo challenges him to a fight. Bakugo fights close and fast to give Midoriya less time to strategize, but Midoriya manages to keep up by increasing 1 for all to 8%. During the brawl, Bakugo admits that he hates the thought of someone previously weak like Midoriya surpassing him and has been blaming himself for All Might's retirement. While the match is close, Bakugo ends up winning after pinning Midoriya to the ground. All Might shows up having witnessed the whole fight and informs Bakugo that he shouldn't be blaming himself for All Might's retirement and tells him about the history of One for All with Bakugo vowing to keep it a secret. He informs the two heroes that they each lack what the other has, Midoriya's conviction to save others and Bakugo's desire to win, and that finding the balance between the two will improve themselves as heroes. He then takes the two back to their dorms, where Aizawa suspends the two from classes for a few days, Midoriya for three and Bakugo for four. Despite the outcome, All Might believes it was necessary to help the two become proper rivals in their quests toward becoming the ultimate heroes. Twice observes the changes in society after All Might's retirement, noting how the combination of All Might's absence and public unease of endeavor taking his place has caused a surge in villain activity. He also reflects how irresponsible use of his quirk caused him to be eternally uncertain if he is real or a copy of himself, and that the League of Villains is the only place that would accept a damaged person like him. He then witnesses a villain named Overhaul kill another group of villains. Meanwhile, UA holds its opening ceremony, where the principal announces that the first-year students will begin the hero work studies earlier than usual due to the rising villain threat. Midoriya returns to class after he serves his house arrest, where Aizawa introduces the Big Three, the top three students of UA, who will be helping class 1A with their hero work studies. Midoriya and his classmates go on battle test with Mirio Togata to prepare for next step to be real pro heroes. The battle begins when class 1A's close combat team tries to surround Mirio, but everyone is taken by surprise when Mirio's clothes suddenly fall off his body. Izuku tries to exploit the openings in his opponent's defense but his kicks go clean through Mirio's physical form. The other students launch an ambush and Mirio swiftly appears behind everyone. Mirio effortlessly knocks out every student of class 1A even Midoriya where Mirio uses his super move called Blinder Touch Eyeball Crush to defeat him. Afterwards, Mirio apologizes to the girls about being naked and asks the class if they have a better idea about work studies. The class thinks that his quirk is strong. They reply that his quirk is too strong and ask to learn the nature of it. Nijire Hado revealed that his quirk is called permeation, it allows his physical form to go through anything if he activates it throughout the entire body. Before Aizawa instructs his class to thank the big three and depart, Class 1A applauds Mirio's speech about his quirk and they realize what the work study could do for their skills. Meanwhile, Bubble Girl reports to Sir Nighteye that Overhaul has made contact with the League of Villains. Twice brings Overhaul to an interview location with the other members of the League. Freelance journalist Tanio Takuda gets an exclusive scoop with Class 1A in hopes of uncovering the new symbol of peace after the retirement of All Might. Shota Aizawa explains to his students that Nizu granted permission for the interview thinking it would be good for their parents and guardians to see them living happily in the dorms.
Tanio tells them about taking pictures of his daily life at school and asks some questions about them. He records Class 1A's daily lives and reviews their quirks. After he's finished, he narrows down the possible candidates for All Might's successor to just Izuku Midoriya. While it was raining in the afternoon, All Might went to the bedrooms of Class 1A, bringing some snacks to share. He meets Izuku outside who is training on his own. After the talk, All Might leaves and promise him to start training in the next day. Tanio has a conversation with Midoriya about everything Izuku has done, since he is All Might's idol. Tanio leaves afterwards and Yurarika goes out to tell Midoriya that dinner is ready. Although she forgets the matter of what he is talking to reporter about when she knows that he had brought meat buns to share with Class 1A. Overhaul tricks twice into bringing him to the League of Villains hideout under the false pretenses of joining the group. There, he invites Tamura's group to work for him while explaining his goal to fill the void left by all for one in the criminal underworld. This results in a conflict where Overhaul, kills Magna and cripples Mr. Compress before taking his leave, while offering Tamura time to reconsider. Meanwhile, Izuku enters Hero Work Studies, and with help from Mirio, sets off to apply for Sir Naitai's agency, who was All Might's former sidekick and is investigating Overhaul. But Mirio warns Izuku that Sir Naitai is very strict, so the latter must impress him on his own without too much of Mirio's help. Izuku enters Naitai's agency and is shocked to see Naitai torturing Bubble Girl with his tickle machine for not making him laugh. Midoriya tries to make him laugh by changing his face into an expression that looks to be the same as All Might, but Sir Naitai is unimpressed and asks if he is making fun of All Might. Sir Naitai asks Izuku to present him with a contract and explains the difference between the hero work studies and the week-long internships. Izuku wants to participate so he can stand out, but Sir Naitai refuses to stamp his paper. He claims Izuku brings no benefit to his agency and asks how he plans to be useful. Izuku battles Sir Naitai to get his stamp and approval to join his agency. Naitai uses his quirk foresight to dodge Izuku, and shakes his confidence, revealing that his quirk showed him a vision of All Might's eventual death and doubts that Izuku is worthy of being All Might's successor and holding one for all. Though Izuku fails to grab the stamp, he earns enough of Naitai's respect to join his agency after he realizes that Midoriya avoided all of the All Might merchandise in his office. He returns to dorms and tells his friends that he accepts the hero work studies in Naitai agency, and congratulates him although he doesn't tell them that the reason why Sir Naitai just took him is to make him give up one for all. Some time later, Izuku and Mirio encounter Overhaul by accident, along with a frightened girl as the first hero work studies is about to begin. After encountering Izuku and Mirio by accident, Overhaul introduces the frightened girl as his daughter Eri. Izuku and Mirio are forced to allow Eri to leave with Overhaul to keep their cover. Mirio reveals Eri's intent to Izuku and says that they should ask Sir Naitai on what to do next before he leaves and ask them to return to the office. Afterwards, still emotionally shaken by Naitai, Izuku confronts All Might to demand the whole truth and asks him about why he didn't tell him about Naitai and Mirio and their connection to one for all. As All Might's successor, he desires to know the full truth about everything. All Might shares that Naitai was a big fan of his and even convinced to take him as a sidekick and the brains of his operation. Six years ago, All Might dissolved their partnership following his battle with All for One. Sir Naitai tries to convince him about his dangers and warns that the symbol of peace will perish to a gruesome villain, but All Might refuses. Back in present, Izuku believes that All Might will fight to live because he has been nurturing him since then. Emotional, Izuku agrees to fight fate alongside his master. Elsewhere, in the Shai Hasaikai compound, Tamura Shigaraki arrives and a black communion begins. After being brought to the Shai Hasaikai's lair, Tamura explains he only realized Overhaul's plans after he removed the bullet that hit Mr. Compress, which caused him to momentarily lose his quirk. In Esuha City, Aijiro Kurishima and Tamaki Amajiki, Sun Eater of Yudate's Big Three, 
a company pro-hero fat gum on patrol when they confront criminals using both bullets that stop quirks along with quirk enhancement drugs. When Tamaki is shot and his quirk is temporarily blocked, Aijiro uses his new Red Riot unbreakable technique to stop the remaining criminal. Fat Gum and the citizens commend Aijiro on a spectacular debut. However, Kurishima recalls his cowardly past and realizes that he has improved since then. Fat Gum prepares to take his trainees to the hospital, but he's very worried about drugs that can stop someone from using their quirk. The next day at school, Aijiro's classmates congratulate his debut that is featured in the news. Achiko and Tsuyu are also featured on the news. While everyone else is carefree, Izuku can't help but feel Eri's weight on his shoulders. Izuku, Aijiro, Achiko, and Tsuyu learn that Sir Naitai has organized a meeting with the other hero work studies and numerous pro heroes to discuss the threat posed by Overhaul and the Shai Hasaikai. During the meeting, it is revealed that the bullet that shot Tamaki contained the blood and cells of a human whose quirk is similar to Aizawa's, speculated to be Eri. Naitai then proposes having the heroes investigate all known Hasaikai properties to find Eri's location. Eraserhead asks Sir Naitai to use his foresight to gain information. However, he refuses because he might view someone's imminent death. After a somber exchange, the meeting concludes with all the heroes agreeing to investigate. The UA students meet in the back, saddened by the state of the girl. Aizawa arrives and encourages his students to keep fighting, truly believing they can save the girl next time. Izuku regains his confidence and is determined to rescue her. Meanwhile, Eri reminisces about her meeting with Izuku. Izuku, Aijiro, Achiko, and Tsuyu are in the middle of training. Deadly focused and somewhat brooding, the work-study students move with extra precision, garnering the attention of their classmates. With advice from Aizawa, Izuku and Mirio overcome their emotions following the meeting. Later at late night, the four work-study students receive messages from Sir Naitai informing them that they finally know where Eri is located and calls everyone to another conference in the preparation for the impending rescue operation. Once everyone is at the Naitai agency, Sir Naitai reveals that Eri is being kept in the main hideout underground. When Fat Gum asks him how he discovered that, Sir Naitai shows a toy intended for little girls and tells them that a member of Shai Hasaikai is buying a lot of toys like that. Naitai uses his quirk on one of Overhaul's subordinates and ascertains Eri's location. With intel on the layout of the Shai Hasaikai's headquarters and support from the police. The heroes launch a raid with Dragon Heroes group subduing several of the Yakuza, while Naitai and Fat Gums groups proceed to the lower levels to retrieve Eri from Overhaul. Back in middle school, Tamaki Amajiki transferred schools on the first day of the spring term. He messed up his introduction due to his shy nature and was sure no one would want to be friends with someone awkward like himself, until a boy that he was best friend the most which is none other than Mirio Togata. Back in the present day, during the start of the raid against the Hasaikai, Tamaki hopes that he can shine as brightly as Mirio does. Sir Naitai leads the others inside the hideout and Eraserhead explains the extreme loyalty between members of the Yakuza. Meanwhile, Joy Iranaka of the Shai Hasaikai uses a quirk enhancement drug to take control of the basement level to separate the intruders, with Tamaki convincing the others to continue without him as he battles three members of the eight Expendables, Overhaul's elite enforcers. Despite being overwhelmed and outnumbered, Sun Eater was able to defeat them successfully and reveals that he understands their bonds even though he can't understand where they come from. He says that friends don't use each other because friends don't eat friends. Deku and Red Riot worries about Tamaki. Fat Gum tells them to believe in Sun Eater and Aijiro decides he must keep trust in Tamaki. Eraserhead notes Mimic's lack of activity and theorizes that Mimic can only use his quirk in one area at a time. As Aizawa strike using the wall by Mimic, Fat Gum pushes him in time and gets separated from the group along with Aijiro who also reveals that he tries to save Eraserhead at the same time, which ends up facing two eight expendable members Kendo Rappa and Hikiji Tengai. Aijiro struggles and is heavily injured, 
but is spurred back into the fight after remembering his struggles with courage during his middle school years and his desire to be like his idol, Crimson Riot. He then helps Fat Gum defeat the two villains by using his punch that shatters Hakiji's barrier and sends both flying into the wall, after he claims that the villains lost this fight because they underestimated the chivalrous spirit of Red Riot. Fat Gum and Aijiro are victorious in their fight against Rappa and Tengai. Rappa, despite still being capable of fighting, allows the two to recuperate out of respect and reveals Overhaul's plan. He asks Fat Gum to treat Aijiro's injury so that he can fight again. Kendo tells Fat Gum that he lives for the thrill of the fight and admits he enjoyed their battle. He even claims that Aijiro was the best time to fight before declaring the battle a draw. Meanwhile, Izuku's group struggle against Iranaka. Before Himiko and Twice ambush them. Though Tamura had previously loaned Himiko and Twice to the Shai Hasaikai as part of Overhaul's conditions, the two are encouraged by Tamura's confidence in them to provoke Iranaka. Mimic snaps and drags everyone deeper underground as he tries to crush both heroes and villains using his ability. While Toga and Twice were subjected to Shin Nemoto's quirk, confession, they backstab the Yakuza of their own accord by taunting Iranaka into exposing himself, allowing the heroes to capture him. Sir Nightai knocks him unconscious by throwing one of his hyperdensity seals and Izuku catches him before he crashes into the ground. Sir Nightai realizes the League betrayed Mimic and says that the heroes have been used. Meanwhile, Mirio manages to rescue Eri after defeating Nemoto and Hasekai member Didoro Sakaki. Overhaul admits that Eri is not his daughter and engages Lamillion in battle, but is nearly defeated. Nemoto intervenes by firing one of the completed quirk-destroying bullets at Eri. Lamillion is forced to take the hit and loses his quirk. Overhaul declares that like Mirio, he will fix diseased men. Lamillion continues fighting, but as he is defeated by Overhaul, Izuku arrives and joins the battle. Earlier in the day, Rocklock tells everyone to make one final push to save the girl. Naitai's team leaves Mimic under Rocklock's watch. The pro hero admits that he is just worried about the young heroes all this time and that they've been stronger heroes than any of the adults. Rocklock places his faith in Deku and Sir Naitai. Deku, Naitai and Eraserhead catches up to Mirio and Deku uses his punch on Overhaul's arm which sends him flying away. Overhaul's subordinate Hari Kurono removes himself and Aizawa from play. Revealing Eri to be the previous Hasaikai boss's granddaughter. Overhaul refuses to accept defeat and uses his quirk to fuse with Nemoto, transforming into a four-armed monster. Naitai orders Izuku to take Mirio and Eri to safety while he holds off Overhaul, but is gravely wounded, and his foresight shows him Izuku being killed and Overhaul escaping with Eri. Izuku tries to jump out in a harm's way but is injured by Overhaul Spike's attack. Despite this, Izuku refuses to give up on saving Eri. Suddenly, Ryukyu's team crashes through the roof with Rikia Katsukame in tow. While Deku faces Overhaul, Ryukyu's team deal with the Hasaikai Rikia Katsukame. Toga, posing as Izuku, goads the girls into defeating Rikia in a way that exposes the basement. Eri notices Lamillion's cape flying through the air and is reminded of everyone's desire to save her. Eri is spurred by the hero's resolve to save her, revealing her quirk to rewind living things, separating Nemoto from Overhaul while being grabbed by Izuku. Overhaul assimilates Rikia to go after Izuku and Eri. Overhaul warns Izuku that Eri's quirk would rewind him out of existence, so Izuku uses 100% of his power to face him harnessing Eri's quirk to undo the damage one for all does to his body. Despite her exhaustion as well as the horrible revelation, Achiko still wishes to try and help Izuku. Naitai asks Froppy to help Mirio while Ryukyu and Uravity help him to the surface. After learning that Eri's quirk won't rewound him out of existence, Deku defeats Overhaul much to Naitai's shock. As Izuku has defied the visions of his foresight, the raid on the Shai Hasaikai is a success as Izuku defeats Overhaul, Eri separates him from Rikia while Tamaki saves Aizawa from Kurono. Eri's power rewinds Overhaul back to normal, 
negating his monstrous form. Achiko arrests and restrains Overhaul before updating Ryukyu on the situation. Eri's power is spiraling out of control, but Aizawa erases her quirk before it kills Azuku. Toga and Twice escape and inform the League of Villains about the Yakuza's loss. The League then intercepts the police convoy to enact their revenge on Overhaul while Dobby turns the sand-powered hero Snatch to glass. Tamura and Mr. Compress destroy both of Overhaul's arms so he can never use his quirk again, and take the four quirk-destroying bullets. Spinner tells his allies they need to leave quickly while Overhaul breaks out into hives and screams out in agony after realizing that he won't be able to heal the boss forever. Meanwhile, after being checked out of the hospital, Izuku learns that Sir Naitai's injuries are fatal. He, All Might, and Mirio visit the man in his final moments. Up in the mountains, the police along with Grand Torino find and successfully apprehend Kurojiri of the League of Villains, but unexpectedly run into one of all for one servants, Gigantomachia. At the hospital, Izuku checks on Mirio before he leaves for school, but Eri is still feverish and must remain behind in the hospital. Meanwhile, Shoto Todoroki and Katsuki Bakugo head off to their provisional hero license special training class, guided by All Might and Present Mike. The work-study group returns to Heights Alliance and reunites with the rest of Class 1A. Achiko recalls talking to Aizawa about being unable to save Sir Naitai. She resolves to help save people in the future. At the training facility, Endeavor confronts All Might and wants to have a talk. As the other students walk through hallways, they hope that others don't cross paths Seiji and Katsuki clash personalities, while Gang Orca and Yakumura Mera watch from another room as they plan to put the students in their toughest trial yet. Katsuki and Shoto attend their special provisional hero license course, having failed the last exam. They, along with Inesa and the real Kami Atsushimi from Shiketsu High School, are tasked with winning the hearts of unruly Masagaki Elementary School children. They are considered to be misbehaved and the lacking of discipline who respect even their teacher, Komari Aikoma had lost control. The children begins to hit, mock, and making fun of the special exam trainees. The trainees tries to work together and befriend with the unruly children, but to no avail. Meanwhile, Endeavor speaks with All Might about being the symbol of peace. Back in training ground, present Mike privately wondering how they're having a rough time with a bunch of grade school kids. He is surprised when Seiji suddenly appears at his side and respond by saying that fighting power with it, is the epitome of foolishness because by doing so will only breed ill will in the heart of the kids. Komari notes that chatting to the children won't work as they realize that their quirks are superior. In order to win the hearts of the Masagaki elementary school children, Katsuki, Inesa, Shoto, and Kami work together under Katsuki's strategy. Present Mike is impressed, saying that at their age he didn't have as much power as they did. Seiji suggests that the reason for their power is possibly due to the quirk singularity doomsday theory. He explains that quirks are mixing more and more as the generations pass and that each generation is producing stronger and more complex quirks, reaching a point where they can be too hard to control. Seeing the children have stopped being unruly and that they pay attention to their elders, Professor Ikoma can barely contain her excitement of seeing what the students have achieved. Present Mike tells her that now it is her turn to guide them properly. At the end of the day, Endeavor vows to Shoto to become a hero that the latter can be proud of. Later, the UA students attend Naitai's funeral along with the pro heroes. Eri has woken up at the hospital, but is still emotionally unstable. Furthermore, the horn on her forehead, which her rewind originates from, has shrunk. Meanwhile, Izuku notices Yuga Aoima acting strangely. Later, Yuga reveals that he knows Izuku's body can't handle his quirk, and that he himself can't handle his own quirk. The two boys form a friendship over their shared struggle. For October, the UA students plan to launch a school festival. Tenya and Momo asking their classmates for suggestions about what things will include or not, for the time of the event. At night, with the exception of interns and Katsuki in the dorms, students continue to discuss what to do for the upcoming school festival. 
Tenya considers that their contribution should be something that gives the other students pleasure and relieves stress. All Class 1A students agreeing the ideas they have suggest including the music and dance. Which their program will be a grand musical performance. Meanwhile, Izuku and Mirio visits Eri as she has requested to see them. Eri wishes to know more of them, as they saved her. Eri is unaware of Naitai's death, but feels guilty for endangering the people who rescued her. Mirio reassures her, and asks her to smile, but she is unable to, and Izuku believes that she still has to be saved from Overhaul's influence. He asks Aizawa to allow her to attend the school festival, so she can smile again. Aizawa agrees, and talks it over with Principal Nizu. Meanwhile, a villain named Gentle Criminal and his subordinate, La Brava, are searching for a scheme that will make him be remembered. On a rooftop, while pouring tea, Gentle tells La Brava that he is searching for something that will make him more magnificent. La Brava begins watching an online video where Gentle Criminal is narrating how some heroes and villains have left their mark on the annals of history. As she gets too excited about the video, Gentle enters the room and asks La Brava if the video has been uploaded. The duo begins recording their next video. It begins as Gentle introduces himself as the man who uploads videos of what are called criminal actions, but he ensures that he doesn't commit crimes at random. While Class 1A prepare for their school festival, Gentle Criminal comes up with a plan which makes him convinced that if he achieves his goal, he will become the center of attention. Izuku engages in one for all training with All Might, who teaches him to use one for all to control wind pressure, granting him ranged attacks. Class 1A is excited as they plan a musical concert. Eri arrives at UA, with Izuku and Mirio showing her around campus at Aizawa's request since due to her being separated from society for years, suddenly thrusting her into a big social event like a school festival might be a bit too much for her. The three continue with the tour, seeing other students working hard on their respective projects for the festival until they decide to go to the lunch rush cafeteria. As this happens, Nizu assures Izuku that the staff has worked hard to prevent villain attacks during the festival, but warns that if an alarm goes off, they would be forced to evacuate and cancel the event. A week passes and Mina tells Izuku that he is fired from the dance team. Izuku is shocked, but fortunately, Mina is just tricking him and clarifies that he has been asked to join the effects team instead since they're worried that people will eventually get bored of Yuga being the disco ball and Koji suggested the idea of the Aoyama ball moving in all directions, so Izuku is requested to maneuver Yuga during the performance. Meanwhile, Gentle Criminal and La Brava are planning to infiltrate the UA High on the day of the festival, to encourage the students to be on guard at all times. In the gymnasium, Class 1A is making their final preparations for their musical performance before the day of the school festival, with Mina working hard to have the dance choreographed precisely. In Heights Alliance, some of the students cannot sleep from how nervous and excited they are. Meanwhile, Izuku is again training with All Might when a scruffy Mei shows up and gives him the support equipment he requested, a pair of Air Force gloves. She also made sure the design went with Izuku's hero costume. Izuku thanks her for making the gloves, and All Might is impressed by how compact they are. Izuku does the last-minute preparations for the school festival and the chance to see Eri's smile. But he unexpectedly runs into Gentle and La Brava, who plan to begin their assault then. He recognizes them from the videos he's seen online, and both Gentle and La Brava recognizes Izuku from the sports festival. To prevent the school fest from being cancelled, Izuku decides to defeat them solo before the festival begins. As the school festival was about to begin, Izuku faces off against Gentle Criminal, who proves an even match with his elasticity quirk. Using ranged attacks, he is able to subdue the two villains. Despite his efforts, Gentle cannot break free of Izuku's grasp. Seeing this, La Brava begins to remember her past. Gentle accepted her for who she was, and when he decided to team up with her he gave her the name of La Brava. Back at present, after whispering that La Brava loves Gentle so much, she uses her love quirk to temporarily strengthen him and nearly overwhelms Izuku. 
As the battle with Gentle continues, Izuku is determined to save the festival especially Eri's heart, while Brava pulls out her laptop and runs off to hack the security system, but she is out of range and tries to proceed further and she notices Ryo Inui and several clones of ectoplasm close by. Izuku ends the fight by taking down Gentle with a St. Louis smash, as La Brava's quirk expires. As Izuku apprehends them and Hound Dog catches their scent. Gentle sends Izuku away, surrendering to him and Ectoplasm in an attempt to cover for La Brava. Gentle Criminal accepts defeat and is apprehended by Hound Dog and Ectoplasm. Izuku rushes to retrieve his supplies with help from one of Ectoplasm's clones and rejoin the festival in time. He makes it in time for Class 1A to do their concert, with Jiro doing a performance of her original song, Hero 2, with help from the class. The performance is loved by all, including Eri, who finally smiles for the first time in her life. The school festival continues with Class 1B putting on its stage play with the audience enjoying it despite being a mishmash of several famous works. At the beauty pageant, the participants battle it out for the title, with Nijair takes the victory after gaining the most votes while the two-time winner Bibamai Kenrenzaki of Class 3G humbly accepting her defeat. As the festival comes to a close, Eri feels a little sad as she was about to leave until Izuku gives her a favorite food that she wants a homemade candy apple, where he had cooked himself much to Eri's glee. Izuku waves goodbye to them as Aizawa and Mirio escort Eri back to the hospital. In the post-credits, La Brava and Gentle are offered chances to redeem themselves by the police where La Brava is interrogated by two police detectives while Gentle Criminal is interrogated by a guerrilla detective. At the end of November, it is revealed that Eri will be staying at UA under the watch of Aizawa and the Big Three. Aizawa informs them that Eri is transferring to UA since she cannot stay in the hospital, and he goes outside with the students while Nijair is taking care of Eri. Also, Mirio reveals that Eri's horn is the source of her rewind quirk, and has started to grow a bit. Meanwhile, the wild wild pussycats, along with Koda, Visit Class 1A, Izuku notices that Koda is also there, and greets him. Mentioning that he still keeps the letter that he wrote to him. Mandalay shows Izuku the new shoes Koda bought which are the exact same kind of red shoes he wears, much to Koda's embarrassment. Elsewhere, the first Japanese hero billboard chart since All Might's retirement begins its broadcast from Kamen Award. The new number one hero is revealed to be Endeavor. Meanwhile, Dobby from the League of Villains sends an intelligent high-end Nomu named Hood to hunt Endeavor down, along with Hawks. The new number two hero, whom he had been meeting. As the two had talked to each other, suddenly, they notice a dark figure in the sky approaching at full speed towards where they are. The waitress arrives to bring them tea but Hawks immediately pulls her away, just as the high-end's head crashes through the glass windows, asking who is the strongest then Endeavor challenges the creature to face him off. Endeavor and Hawks fight against the high-end Nomu. Endeavor struggles to hold his own against it, as its regeneration, strength and speed are formidable, while Hawks uses his fierce wings quirk to keep bystanders out of trouble. Hood grievously injures the left side of Endeavor's face, seemingly defeating him. Citizens try to flee in a panic, fearing that there is no longer any hope without All Might. Despite his injuries, Endeavor continues fighting, and with Hawk's help, incinerates the high end high above the city. Though severely wounded, Endeavor imitates All Might's pose which is a sign of his start, as onlookers cheer for him. Izuku turns towards the television as he narrates that heroes cannot stop moving forward, and with All Might retired, the new generation of heroes must carry his will. In a post credit scene, Izuku has a mysterious dream where he encounters the previous users of One for All, including the first, the younger brother of All for One. As their hands meet, Izuku suddenly awakens and damages the room with his hand glowing on One for All's power. Class 1A is given a training mission to fight hypothetical villains. It is revealed that Nijair and Tamaki of the Big Three are posing as villains while Mirio plays a civilian in distress. Recovering from his injuries after the battle against the high-end Nomu, Endeavor thinks back to his encounter with the villain Dobby. 
Meanwhile, Hawks meets Dobby at an isolated warehouse. Dobby attacks Endeavor and Hawks only to retreat upon the arrival of Mirko. That night, Dobby and Hawks criticize each other for having changed the plan and that it'll be some time before the latter can meet Shigaraki. Determined to make the world a place for heroes to have some free time, Hawks joined the League of Villains to take them down from the inside. Endeavor realizes he can't seek forgiveness from his family and instead needs to atone for his wrongdoings. After a physically draining day, Midoriya dreams of the day one for all was created and meets the original holder. After discussing his dream with All Might, Midoriya is alarmed that the essence of one for all's previous holders live on within the quirk. Later that day, Class 1A and 1B meet at Field Gamma for their first joint training battle. Both classes, along with Hitoshi Shinso from General Studies, are to pair up into groups of four verses for matches that is commentated by Class 1B's teacher Vlad King. Soon after the first match begins, the Class A team is quickly ambushed by Class B, only for Shinso to turn the tide with his brainwashing quirk, now more advanced with his persona chords, allowing him to mimic any voice. The Class A team is quickly overwhelmed resulting in the capture of both Kurishima and Koda. Improvising a new plan, Kaminari allows himself to be captured, distracting the Class B team in order for the threat of Shinso's quirk to destroy their communication, and for Ajui to deliver the finishing blows. As Class A celebrates their victory of the first match, Shinso thinks about how far he still needs to go to become the hero he hopes to be. After a short break following match 1, match 2 begins, with Dark Shadow quickly possessed by Kurwaro. During his internship, Tokoyami was frustrated by Hawks using him just for information, so Tokoyami strove to prove himself as someone to be taken seriously during the work studies. Despite having no interest in training the next generation, Hawks knew all along that Tokoyami just needed a push to embrace his full potential. Having created a new move under Hawks' wing, Tokoyami takes to the skies as Class A begins their counterattack just as Kendo predicted. Suddenly, mushrooms begin to sprout everywhere. Against the quirks of Komori and Fukudashi, the Class A team is divided, with Aoyama captured as a result. Fueled by a desire to surpass Yayorozu, Kendo engages her solo. Yayorozu manages to launch a bag of support items across Field Gamma to her team. With the aid of thermal goggles, Tokoyami launches an attack on the hidden Class B team, capturing them. In a desperate move, Komori enlarges the spores inhaled by Tokoyami, incapacitating him. With an unconscious Yairozu in tow, an exhausted Kendo captures Hagakure. Despite Class B winning match 2, Kendo feels the victory is unearned, having failed to surpass Yairozu. While the combatants recover, the combat zone is moved to another section of Field Gamma due to all the damage from Class B. All Might wonders about the previous holders as Midoriya and Bakugo discuss what happened in the One for All dream. As match 3 begins, Tokoyami approaches Todoroki and reminds him that they represent their mentors, the top two heroes. Elsewhere after stopping a wheeled villain, Endeavor impatiently awaits a response from Todoroki, having offered to teach him his signature move the way a father should. The Class A team's strategy is quickly dismantled by Class B's Hananuki, with Tetsuetsu focused on taking Todoroki out while disobeying Vlad King's orders to keep the damage to a minimum. Trapped, Ida unleashes Recipro Turbo, a new move derived from a training method passed down from his brother Tensei. As the endurance match between Todoroki and Tetsutetsu rages on, both combatants begin suffering fatigue, leaving Todoroki no choice but to attempt his father's signature move. Hananuki and Ida interfere, resulting in the four combatants getting knocked out in the chaos. With the time limit reached and most of the combatants either imprisoned or incapacitated, Match 3 is a draw. In Recovery Girl's office, Todoroki and Ida reflect on what they need to improve, with Hananuki excitedly hoping for a rematch someday. Match 4 begins and Bakugo is ready to show Midoriya his growth. Creating a plan targeting Bakugo's selfish traits, the Class B team quickly works to overwhelm Class A, only to be driven back by their perfect teamwork. Bakugo will always seek a perfect victory and that includes not letting a single member of his team fall. In the end, match 4 finishes in 5 minutes with a victory for Class A. 
After, Bakugo awkwardly shrugs off Midoriya and All Might's compliments. As match 5 nears, Manoma and his team begin discussing their strategy, with their main focus being to take Midoriya down first. Elsewhere, Midoriya practices with one for all, and the quirk operates no different from usual. At long last, the final match of joint training begins. At Tartarus Prison, all for one oddly hears the voice of his brother which disturbs the guards. All Might is concerned when Gran Torino mentions a previous holder of one for all once told Shimura, the time has not yet come. Enacting his clever trap, Manoma declares Bakugo at fault for All Might's end causing Midoriya to attack in anger. Black tendrils suddenly sprout from his arm, rampaging through Field Gamma. Believing that heroes need protecting as well, Uraraka restrains Midoriya while Shinso uses his quirk to brainwash him. The tendrils subside and Midoriya awakes in the Vestige world, meeting a previous holder. The tendrils are the man's original quirk, Black Whip, which manifested in response to Midoriya's intent to capture Manoma. The man explains that the core of one for all has grown so large, the quirks of the previous holders are manifesting within Midoriya. Regaining consciousness, Midoriya and Uraraka go on the defense as match 5 turns into an all-out brawl. Despite the danger of Black Whip's rampage, Aizawa allows the match continue for the sake of the combatants' ambitions. Copying one for all, Manoma attempts to attack Uraraka, only for the quirk to oddly do nothing. Shinso intervenes, unintentionally giving Midoriya a way to engage him. The two begin their rematch, with Shinso pulling two pipes down on Midoriya only to be countered by Black Whip. Together, Uraraka and the others defeat the remaining Class B team members, and Midoriya manages to pin Shinso down. Despite his defeat and being unable to show his growth to Midoriya, Shinso can't help but smile in amazement about Class A and B, Match 5 and Joint Training ends with a victory for Class A, and Shinso earns a passing grade for his transfer into the hero course. That night, Midoriya and Bakugo spar in Jim Gamma in hope of getting Black Whip to manifest. Midoriya acknowledges that since he refused to use the quirk until he better mastered one for all, it won't manifest until then. Bakugo leaves Midoriya deep in thought after pointing out how one for all has become quite similar to all for one. The next day, Aizawa brings Manoma to the dorm in hope of him being able to help Eri train by copying her quirk. Manoma is unable to do so as his quirk doesn't work well with those that require energy to activate. With encouraging words from Midoriya, Eri still intends to master her quirk, with the feeling mutual for Midoriya. Having finally earned their hero licenses, Bakugo and Todoroki take to the snowy streets and defeat a gang of thieves. Later, the duo arrive back at the dorm, only to be greeted with a surprise party by the rest of the class for passing the exam. While Japan deals with the aftermath of the destruction of Daika City nine days earlier, Midoriya and the other students of Class 1A begin interview training. Visualizing unlocking one for all, Midoriya is able to properly manifest a little of Black Whip for just a second. Meanwhile, All Might begins researching what he can of one for all's previous holders. As winter vacation begins, Class 1A, plus Eri, celebrates their first Christmas together. The excitement causes Midoriya to think about how even though their future is uncertain. He hopes they can all have this much fun next Christmas. With the work studies program returning, Midoriya and Bakugo have no one to go to with Night Eye Agency too busy and Best Genus missing. Todoroki makes an offer for them to join him at Endeavor's Hero Agency. A few weeks earlier, Hawks is given another chance by Dobby to join the League of Villains and visits Best Genus to check on his recovery, pulling a feather blade on the hero when his back is turned. After celebrating New Year's with his mother, Midoriya heads off to begin his work studies. Endeavor meets his new interns in the city and has to cut the talk short to stop an attempted attack by a doomsday theory spouting villain. After helping to defeat the villain and his minions, Hawk strangely hands a copy of Destro's Meta Liberation War to Endeavor and recommends the book's highlighted passages. Noticing the way Hawks is acting, Endeavor immediately realizes something is wrong. While the interns are welcomed to Endeavor's agency by his sidekicks, the hero returns to his office and studies Destro's book. Endeavor connects specific letters in the highlighted sections together as a secret message from Hawks. 
In four months, the Meta Liberation Army will attack Japan. With Hawk's message in hand, Endeavor now understands the true reason behind the Hero Public Safety Commission bringing back the work-study program, to ensure everyone is ready for the forthcoming attack of Shigaraki and his combined forces. Accepting Midoriya and Bakugo as his students, Endeavor first seeks to understand what each has to work on. Midoriya hopes to master all of his other quirks, and Bakugo desires to know what he is missing besides strength. Todoroki interjects, intending to learn everything he can from Endeavor. To become someone like All Might. Endeavor sets a goal for his interns, to defeat a villain before he can buy the work study's end. Thinking of Tokoyami and the other young heroes of the next generation, Hawk sets his own goal, the villains will not succeed, and hopefully everyone will still be smiling by spring. The Oki Mariner crew is pursuing a ship carrying chemicals used to make an illegal quirk booster drug. Due to the difficult situation, Selkie requests a team up with the Ryukyu Agency. Ryukyu, Yurarika, Ajui, and Nijai arrive, and Selkie has the young heroes relax on the beach for the day to boost their morale. As the sun sets, the heroes take to the ocean while the smugglers attempt another escape. Selkie and Ajui board the ship, but a cargo plane carrying the chemical starts to take off. Sirius fires a harpoon carrying Yurarika, who utilizes the grappling hook in her new costume to latch onto the plane. Yurarika takes out the smuggler and with help from Ryukyu and Nijair, lands the plane safely. Afterwards, Selkie and Ryukyu discuss how the smuggler's client had used a fake name and that the chemicals were supposed to be brought to Athian, Europe. Meanwhile, a mysterious man hears about the disrupted delivery. However, he declares it to be fine as he already has the amount needed to prepare for the salvation of humanity. A week into the work studies, Endeavor gets a call from Fuyumi who suggests bringing the trio home for dinner. The dinner soon gets uncomfortable as the conversation switches from being about Fuyumi's cooking to how Endeavor prevented Todoroki from eating Natsuo's cooking. A disgruntled Natsuo soon gets up and leaves. After dinner, Midoriya and Bakugo overhear Todoroki and Fuyumi talking about everything. Todoroki says he can't forgive Endeavor so easily for what he did to their mother and is unsure of how to feel. Midoriya tells Todoroki he believes he's getting ready to forgive Endeavor, that it's fine to not be able to forgive him if he wants. Endeavor thinks about what he can do for his family after all this time and wishes that Toya could have been there too. A few days earlier, a hooded man is released from prison and walks around a Christmas decorated bazaar, gleefully smiling when he comes across a television playing Endeavor's victory over High End. Fuyumi explains to Midoriya and Bakugo that Natsuo was very close to Toya, causing him to blame Endeavor for his brother's death. Eventually the time comes for Endeavor to bring the trio back to UA. The car is soon attacked by street white lines, controlled by a villain named Ending, with Natsuo held hostage. Ending emotionally explains that heroes can't kill, but since Endeavor had to kill the high-end Nomu, he can do it again. Natsuo's scared face causes Endeavor to hesitate. Ending launches nearby cars into the air. And hangs Natsuo in front of a moving train. Bakugo saves Natsuo, Midoriya uses Black Whip to grab the cars, and Todoroki captures Ending. After hugging Natsuo, Endeavor apologizes to him as he never intended on avoiding his kids, but still ran away from his responsibilities. Natsuo has no intention of ever forgiving him and Endeavor says it's okay since he just wants to atone. Endeavor decides the best thing he can do for his family is to ensure they live happily without him. While Class 1A celebrates the start of the third semester, Aizawa and present Mike are summoned to Tartarus Prison by Detective Tsukachi and Gran Torino. There, the two learn that Kurojiri is a Nomu created using the corpse of their school friend Oboro Shirakumo. Since the Nomu retain some of their former personalities, Aizawa and Mike are asked to talk to Kurojiri in the hopes of getting information about the League of Villains. Once awake, Kurojiri grows concerned about Shigaraki's whereabouts. Disturbing Aizawa since Shirakumo was always concerned for others. Aizawa and Mike bring up tales from their school days and have an emotional breakdown as they reveal just how much Shirakumo's friendship and death affected them. Kurojiri's programming fails, allowing Shirakumo's conscience to take over. Seeing his friends again, 
Shirakumo is only able to choke out Hospital before succumbing to Kurojiri again. This new clue is sent to Hawks. Elsewhere, All for One's doctor laughs manically as Shigaraki's process of becoming his ultimate masterpiece is progressing better than expected. Two months earlier, Gigantomachia appears before the League of Villains, declaring Shigaraki unworthy of being All for One's successor. During the attack, the League is teleported to the lab of All for One's assistant, Dr. Ajiko. The doctor intends to help Shigaraki in his goal of destroying everything that irritates him, but before Shigaraki can be granted power, he must defeat Gigantomachia. The League returns to Gigantomachia while Dr. Ajiko asks Dobby to help him test out a high-end normal. A month and a half later, the League of Villains have made no progress in defeating Gigantomachia, but Shigaraki's strength and skill has been increasing. Intending to talk to Jiren, Twice is alarmed to find out that the League's broker has been captured and tortured by Redestro, leader of the Meta Liberation Army. Redestro invites the League of Villains to Daika City to face an ultimatum. Shigaraki accepts, smiling at the prospect of Gigantomachia crushing his challenger's forces. Daika City's welcoming party for the League quickly turns into an ambush, causing everyone to get separated. Toga is soon surrounded by Curious and her supporters. Intending to understand why Toga is the way she is, including why she attacked and drank the blood of a classmate in middle school, Curious overwhelms Toga with her explosive arsenal. Toga doesn't know what a normal life is, just that she wants to be the people she loves. Due to her near-death state, Toga's quirk evolves, unintentionally allowing her to use Eurarika's zero gravity. Dropping Curious and her supporters from the sky. Elsewhere, Shigaraki demonstrates his evolved quirk as well, killing those beyond who he has touched. While Dobby begins his battle with the ice user Geaton, twice finds an unconscious Toga only to be surrounded by skeptics puppets that were modified to look like an unmasked twice. Captured, twice can do nothing as skeptics puppets attempt to snap Toga's neck. Faced with the pain of his arms being broken, twice finally realizes he is not a double and unleashes thousands of doubles of himself. Determined to not let his friends die, the twice doubles swarm Daika City, helping to turn the tide in the League's favor. To ensure Shigaraki's survival, Dr. Ajiko calls upon Gigantomachia, urging him to protect all for one successor. Twice double reaches Redestro's tower to rescue Jiren, but is no match for Redestro's speed and strength, even with doubles of the League on his side. Shigaraki decays the base of the tower, bringing it all crumbling down. While the twice doubles protect Jiren, Shigaraki comes face to face with Redestro. Redestro overwhelms Shigaraki, destroying his left hand and the hands he wears all over his body, causing him to experience flashes of his deceased family. As a child, Tenko Shimura, Shigaraki, lives under the one harsh rule of his father Kotaro, never talk about heroes, as they do nothing but hurt their own families to help strangers. Despite this, Tenko's sister sneaks him a picture of their grandmother, Nana Shimura. However, Tenko's excitement is slapped away by his father's rage. While his family watches on, unsure of what to do. Thinking back to when Nana abandoned him to the foster system, Kotaro realizes he made a mistake. Tenko's quirk manifests, killing his entire family one by one, even his mother as she attempts to comfort him. He attempts to beg his father for help, but Kotaro attacks him. Enraged, Tenko jumps on his father and purposely kills him with his decay. Among the blood and rubble, Tenko feels a strange sense of pleasure and acknowledges that he may have wanted this all along. Ignored by bystanders, Tenko wandered the city streets alone, hoping for a helping hand, which he got in all for one. Thus, Tenko was slowly groomed into the villain he is today, Tamira Shigaraki. Back in the present, Consumed with a sense of freedom, Shigaraki unleashes the full power of his quirk, turning Daika City into nothing but a crater. Believing that Shigaraki is the embodiment of Destro's ideology, Redestro declares that he and the Meta Liberation Army will follow him. At the same time, Gigantomachia acknowledges Shigaraki as all for one successor. Over the next week, the Liberation Army's influence makes quick work to cover up the truth of what happened at Daika City. 
In their newly constructed mansion headquarters, the League of Villains and the Meta Liberation Army merge forces into the Paranormal Liberation Front as its lieutenants are announced before Gigantomachia and the assembled members including an undercover Hawks. Due to the injuries he sustained, Redestro's damaged legs were amputated and he now moves around in a high-tech chair. Pleased with what he has seen, Dr. Ajiko offers a recovering Shigaraki power. Hawks, undercover within the Paranormal Liberation Front, has put all the pieces together except for one, Shigaraki's sponsor Dr. Ajiko. Meanwhile, Ujiko begins performing the experiments necessary to give Shigaraki power that will let him surpass all for one and obtain one for all. Back in the present, Class 1A shows off the new abilities and skills that they learned in their work studies. Afterward, All Might informs Midoriya and Bakugo about the quirks of the previous holders of One for All and how the quirk passed from individual to individual. That night, 1A throws a party celebrating the beginning of the third term and Midoriya thinks back to how much his life has changed, and how blessed he feels. Three months later, all Hero Course students are summoned for a joint operation with the Pro Heroes. Unbeknownst to them all, the war with the Paranormal Liberation Front is about to begin and Hero Society will never be the same. Thank you for watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment on what you thought. As well as let me know which anime series you want me to cover next time.